Hey you guys, welcome back to a brand new video. So if you are passionate about skincare and see products that are effective and affordable, then this is the channel for you. So please do make sure you subscribe down below and join our little skincare family. And also please do give this video a massive thumbs up because it really does help me out. And so without further ado, let's get on to today's video. And so the end of 2020 is fast approaching, so I thought it's probably about time I did my worst skincare of 2020 video for you guys. And they're awful products. <laughs> I really, really do not like these selection of products. They've either just really not agreed with my skin or I just don't like the formula or the consistency or their overall results, how they feel on the skin. And I just want you guys to bear in mind that this is my own personal opinion of products that I just have not liked for me personally. There are millions and millions of products out there that, you know, we're not gonna like every single one of them and we're also gonna like different things and that is absolutely totally fine. This is just my own personal experience on these set of products, so let's get into it. And so the first product that I really, really didn't like is from a brand that you've actually probably not really heard of as of yet. So it's a new brand that launched in the past couple of months and they're called Berry Blossom London. And this is their Sun Lover Sunscreen SPF 50 Plus and it's totally broad spectrum. Totally broad spectrum. <laughs> and so there's a bit of a backstory with this brand actually is because over in the summer months, they contacted me and said they were launching a new skincare brand and they would love for me to partner with them and work on with them and stuff and you know I kind of really did like the message that they were sending out to their consumers and sort of just the whole philosophy and the brand ethos of the company and obviously I said to them I said you know I need to try these products out before I agree or sign to a contract or anything like that. A few months later you know I was in in and out of contact with them and then they sent me um, their selection of products so they've got a cleansing oil they've got a, a sleeping mask and a few sheet mask and this sunscreen and the cleansing oil is actually you know okay for a cleansing oil but when I applied this it left my skin purple and white and ghostly <laughs> it was kind of that sunscreen that was just really sort of gathering on my facial hair and really becoming quite sort of clumpy and just not nice whatsoever and yeah so I declined the partnership because of this sunscreen I just felt like you know 2020 has brought us a lot of crap you know we've learned a lot from 2020 as well and I just thought I didn't want to I didn't want to sort of promote a sunscreen that I didn't believe in and that I didn't feel like was very inclusive to all skin tones and all skin types it's probably the worst sunscreen that I have tried this year and it really is quite sad because I really did love the brand but yeah it just wasn't for me and that is absolutely fine I totally appreciate the ingredients list like the second ingredient is titanium dioxide it's got fatty alcohols in there it's got glycerin it's got niacinamide it's got alpha arbutane it's got zinc oxide in there as well so and it's got aloe leaf juice in there so yeah really kind of a fantastic formulation however the end result just didn't deliver it for me unfortunately and so now moving on to a cleanser that well left my feeling a bit parched. So it is the Alicia Koi Skin Refining Snail Cleanser, which contains 10,000 ppm of snail secretion filtrate, and it says it's for all skin types. When I say it stripped my skin, it absolutely all in well strict my skin. And so snail secretion filtrate is supposed to really moisturize and soften the skin as well as giving it antioxidant benefits and also some anti-inflammatory benefits as well. So it's one of those K-beauty trends that has literally taken off and it really does depend on the whole formula of how snail secretion filtrate or snail mucin can work on your skin and how it can give you the fantastic results it's supposed to. So it says snail secretion filtrate and ceramide NP for a moisturized finish after cleansing. Well, oh my god, I've never experienced a cleanser so stripping and so drying on my face. Like the first time I used it, I was just like, you know, you pat down your face with like a, a, a flannel or like a muslin cloth or anything like that. Oh my god, I was like, I felt like my skin was setting concrete, <laughs> that it was so dry, I was just like, get some essence and toner or facial mist on that skin right now. And now we have a product that probably some of you might actually have liked in the past. This comes to no surprise to any of you that this product was 
the probably the most underwhelming one I have used this year. So it's the Ordinary's Grenactive Retinoid 5% in Squally. So I know obviously with retinoids and retinol it can take quite a long time for you to see results on the skin. However, this just did absolutely nothing for me and the consistency I really really did not like and I just don't think I would be going for a retinol or a retinoid in a squalene solution in the future. And so what it says on the label in the small print is a highly stable water-free solution of 0.5% ester of all trans retinoic acid. So in terms of the retinoid family and sort of the ladder, at the top, at the big bad boss, you have all trans retinoic acid. And then moving down, which has to be converted once, is your retinaldehyde, and then converted twice is your retinol, and then converted three times is like the likes of retinal palmitate, for example. So it's how your skin converts that retinol and how effective and how quickly it can be on your skin. Anyway, and so the 0.5% ester of the all trans retinoic acid acid is the hydroxypinaclone retinoate. And I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. So the hydroxypinaclone retinoate is kind of what you would class as a new and modern version of retinoic acid. However, the result and sort of the efficiency of this ingredient are still not proven as much as they could be in terms of retinol and retinoids. And for me, when I'm applying and layering my skincare products, you know, I would always kind of start after a cleansing and after toning my skin, would either be putting that retinol on if it wasn't in the squalene kind of form. However, because it is in that squalene form and it's that kind of like really thick, oily consistency, I really was just like, how do I even apply this? Which step in my routine do I apply this product? Do I apply it first because it has the retinol in there? Or do I apply it last because it has the squalene in there? I was just a bit like, oh, where does it even fit? And that just didn't sit well with me, unfortunately. And now moving on to a facial mist, which... Oh, Kind of breaks my heart a little bit because you know here on this channel we love our facial mist if i've ever chucked a bottle of perfume on my face then this would come close to it because this was just oh too much too much for my skin so this is the dr jart ceramidin cream mist and yeah i was really disappointed when i tried this out actually because I've heard a lot of good things about Dr. Jar. I've heard also a lot of good things about the Ceramidin range. I am not against fragrance in skincare, however this takes it to another level. Like if the fragrance is in there just, you know, for kind of like an ar ar aromatic or like a sensual <laughs> kind of feel, you know what I mean? Like it's, it, it's there but it's not really there, then I'm, I'm not bothered about it. However, the perfume ingredient is so high, it's just too much. What's also really disappointing about this is that, you know, it's the ceramide in range, so it's the Dr. Jart 5 sort of ceramide complex in there. So you've got your ceramide NP, your ceramide AS, your ceramide AP, ceramide NS, and also your ceramide EOP. So there's five different ceramides in there to, you know, hopefully strengthen and repair the skin barrier um, in all aspects of you know, the word. However, the ceramide complex are the last ingredients on this ingredients list. It just, just really did kind of like sting my face so much because obviously of the fragrance in there. So I've not got sensitive skin, but yeah, that was far too much for me. And last but not least is a cleanser from a brand that I am just totally obsessed with. However, this cleanser just did absolutely nothing for me whatsoever. So it is the Hylamide High Efficiency Face Cleanser. And you guys know I speak about Hylamide quite a lot here on this channel because of their formulations, their technology. And if you guys don't know, they are um, the Ordinary Sister brand, so they come from the same Desian group. But this cleanser, I have tried so many different sort of ways of how to incorporate this into my routine, and I still felt like I just, it wasn't doing anything at all for me. It's kind of like this, you know, this like, um, screw top, <laughs> which, you know, you kind of, it feels almost like it would do like a toner. Can you see it slowly coming out with that? That's quite a lot of pressure on there as well. It just feels like it's supposed to be 
a makeup remover that you apply on um, on a cotton pad or something like that. However, the directions say if makeup is present, massage well onto dry skin and rinse with warm water. If no makeup is present, massage well onto wet face and rinse with warm water. So going off the directions of this cleanser, you kind of just think, okay, well, I'm not wearing any makeup, I'm wearing sunscreen though, so I'm just gonna, you know, do it like I would do like a, a water base, do it like I would do, do it like... <laughs> so yeah, basically you would just think of using this like you would do a water based cleanser, but the kind of, it doesn't lather up, it doesn't do anything, you know, in terms of feeling like it's cleaning your skin or anything like that, and then I've also tried a, like kind of mixing it in with another water-based cleanser, kind of getting that um, lather consistency to try, and, to try and just make it spread well on the skin. However, it kind of just went against the other cleanser and just didn't do anything again. I really kind of was very disappointed in this because I was like high efficiency face cleaner, oh yeah, this is gonna, you know, clean my skin without it feeling stripped and it's going to leave it hydrated and it's going to be so easy to incorporate into my routine but just from the get-go the overall application and the feel on the skin and yeah I'm just no. And so that is all from the worst skincare products I have tried in 2020. Like I said again it is my own personal experience and views of these products. Some of these products might have worked so incredibly well for your skin however just my personal preference and how it felt on my skin and you know to target my concerns and my skin type just absolutely no thank you will not be using you again. <laughs> um, so yeah, I really do hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you very very soon for a brand new one. Bye bye!